Hello everyone. Happy Friday. <laughs> I am so glad it is the weekend. I'm excited for this. Hey, and you know, today, Friday stream, we're going to be continuing on our creating an epic world stream with the fantasy uh, world style. So now if you missed part one and two, go definitely go check those out before you start in here. Basically, what we're going to be doing in this stream is continuing on adding our mountain ranges onto the map using plate tectonics. And if you don't really remember how we did that, we created the plates by using the path tool. And then we are going to use the process of subduction to create our mountain ranges. Now, there are other ways of creating mountains, obviously, besides subduction. But we're going to stick with this one for this because, you know, having too many different rules and all this different stuff, trying to stick to reality can be overwhelming, at least for me. So I'm not going to be going down that route. Now, if you um, want to know how I made the land masses, I made these little group or these shape tool uh, land masses. And I'll go ahead and provide the link to that um, in the chat. So if you want to use those land masses, you can. That way you can just piece them together and then paint on top of them. They're, they're basically the shape tool uh, made with clipping masks. Now, the only downside to using that is you won't be able to use things such as the mask effects because mask effects don't work with the group. Don't work with these um, shapes at all, unfortunately. So just kind of know that you'll have to paint in any of that kind of stuff. So, but you don't have to go that route. You can use the add mode of the mask tool if you should desire. All right. So again, we're going to be adding in our mountains. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll just quickly put in mountains here. And there's a couple things that I want to mention as uh, we're putting them down. And that is you don't have to follow the lines perfectly. The beauty of the of making a fantasy map is you don't have to follow all the rules and guidelines. You can change things as you see fit and whatnot. Now, I'm going to choose basically what kind of mountain that I want to use. And the way that I kind of decide that is what where each biome is going to be. You notice that I painted in some color coding that goes across. Those kind of represent my climate zones. We did make a climate guide um, the climate zone guide at the very beginning in episode one. So let me see. Let me click climate zones. There it is. Let's select that real quick. If I click it, you see that I made these climate zones here. All right. And with, and so instead of leaving this guide on at zero at hundred percent opacity, I just used painting just, you know, these will not be the final pieces. These will not be the final textures I'm going to be using. Again, it's just a visual aid for me to decide what mountains to put down in certain areas. And what I want to do is I don't want to use all the same color mountain because if it's all the same, then it's going to look weird, right? It's all going to look like the mountains are in the same type of biome or region. So when you are putting down mountains, think about what kind of biome, what kind of region that is, and then you can kind of figure out the mountains that you want to use. The other important thing is knowing contrast. You don't want to use light mountains on a light biome texture because there's no contrast and therefore the mountain won't pop up. Let me give you an example. So if I take uh, a mountain and I take a darker one, let's say let's use this right here. It's got a clipping mask called dark mountains and then I place it down on the dark green. Now, those actually pop out because those are quite darker, but quite lighter. But if I was to maybe like bring the brightness down on these, you'll notice that it's not going to pop out as much. And I try to think about contrast a little bit when I'm doing things. So I want to have maybe like some kind of greenish type of mountains. And you're going to want to use a mountain that has a clipping mask. These specifically have clipping masks. Notice that when I place them down, that they pick up whatever textures on the FG layer. If I turn off the clipping mask you'll notice that the FG layer no longer shows up on it. So using these really helps with blending. See what happens when I move it over to here? It picks up that green texture. So just kind of remember that. So that way blending is gonna be easier for you. So let's go ahead and put down the mountain ranges. I'm gonna scale them down to around the same scale that I have these other mountains. You can have them be a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller, but I don't recommend drastically massive uh, scale differences. See this massive? difference between that mountain and that mountain, those scale differentials look weird. They're going to be, the human eye is going to fight that a little bit. So don't go with that scale. Make sure that they're relatively around the same scale. So let me take a look at this one. This scale is set to 50 and this one is set to 70. So it doesn't hurt to maybe scale it down to around 60. And then what I'll do is I'll build the range going down upon this line right here. So let me go ahead and add in the mountain. I'm going to go down this way. What I My recommendation is to create one straight line. So click, hold, drag, and then 
offset a couple to the side like this. And that's going to make the range look like it flows and it has this S shape. Because if you just have a straight line like this, then it's not going to look very natural. All right. But when you stagger things, push here, there, 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 like that, it's going to give it a more natural feel. The other thing that you might want to consider doing after you placed those down, let's see, I got to undo that. I accidentally deleted um, something here. What did I select? Let's lock that. I bet you that's probably one of my guides. We're going to delete that. Here we go. Let's go ahead and lock that. Make sure I don't select things. There we go. Perfect. The other thing you can do is take the mountain that's at the beginning and the end of the range. So like these two end mountains and scale them down a little bit smaller. It kind of makes sense that your mountains, as the goes furthest away when the range ends, the mountains get smaller. The closer you get to the center of the range, the mountains get a little larger. So just remember, you can always bring the scale down of that. Now, the other thing that I recommend with putting down mountains is don't always use the same type. Mountains can be jagged. They can be fantasy looking, right? So they can have this very jagged look. So don't be afraid to use things like these mesas right here. Let me go all the way down to the bottom and you'll see there's a thing called terrain. You have these nice light mesas. You have these green stalagmites. You have these jagged rocks right here. You have these green karsts. All of these work Great. These are great for using for mountain ranges, and they give a variety to your mountains as well. In a fantasy setting, you want something that's going to be more than just your average mountain, right? These jagged mountains might represent a violent clash of land masses smashing up against each other and pushing the mountain upward in its jagged formation. And so using these mesas and these karsts are a great um, mountain to use, even though they're karsts, they still work as mountains. And again, it will give you the variety that you need. And so what I'll do is I'll scale them up a little bit. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to create the first bit of line. And what I you don't have to do is you don't have to follow all the way through. If you want, you can put another range right here like that. And don't forget to do the staggering. Stagger off to the side. Stagger, stagger, stagger. There you go. So that part is going to help. Stagger those a little bit. The other thing that you can do, again, don't forget to scale down the ones at the end. So these are the ones at the very end. Let's scale them down. And then the other thing you can do to add some really nice variety is to randomly rotate. So what I'll do is I'm just going to randomly rotate these in different directions like this. And what this is going to do is it's going to give it this nice kind of chaotic feel to it that I really like. So I'm going to rotate each one of these. Let's rotate that one that way. Usually I rotate them in different directions. So the first one I'd rotate to the left and the next one to the right and to the left. And that will give it a nice kind of different feel to it. So if you look at the range right here and see how they're rotated and then look at the difference with the one that's just straight up, you see, there's a big difference. It gives it a different feel to it. So I'm just going to rotate these. I want just some to have just a random rotation off to the side here, there we go. And that will give it a more of a more interesting kind of fantasy feel to it because there is an importance about balancing out the realistic part and the fantasy part. And one thing I see some people do is they focus almost entirely on the realism part and then it loses its a fantasy element. And then I see people who focus only on fantasy and don't use any realistic elements. And by combining both fantasy and realism you create a contrast and that's going to make the map pop out more so don't focus on one over the other focus on how realism will make it more believable to the viewer's eye or your player's eyes and that have that fantasy element of jagged rocks crazy rock formations floating islands add that fantasy element which will clash against the realistic elements making them pop out more so it's a big important thing to kind of do that so i'll continue adding in um, some more mountains here Let's put some like right here. I'm just going to single click because I don't want to create a full range. I might want to create maybe just a couple off to the side here. And again, you don't have to follow your lines that you made that represent your um, that represent your uh, tectonic plates or the plates. You don't have to follow those perfectly. Remember, they're just a guideline. Don't have to follow them perfectly. So just follow them as a rough guide. Let's keep adding more. We'll put, we'll stop with this island for now, and then we'll move over to another island and add more, and we'll use a different mountain range instead of that one. 
we want to use as many different options and variety. Remember, we're creating an epic world, so we want to add variety to it. Let's go ahead and add some of these jagged ones. I'm just going to add them along the coastline as if there was like a kind of an interesting event that took place. So the ones that are on the left side, I'll have them facing to the right, like going towards out where the ocean is. And then when I get closer to this side, I'll flip them probably again with the flip tool. And what this will do is it will create this kind of nice feeling of this kind of jagged mountain part along the water. I'll make sure I'm going to flip them. Um, now that I'm on this other side, I'll flip them over here. There we go. That looks good. And then it only makes sense to maybe take some of those same green cars right here like this and maybe just rotate a couple and just kind of create this small little range that goes out to here. Out like that. There we go. Small little range. I think that looks good. Let's take a step back. Always take a step back to see what things look like. We might want to add more mountains to each one of these things, but not using plate tectonics. We'll use different methods. Okay, let's go here into the white one. So great example here, use your white tipped mountains. So you have dark snow cap mountains and you have this light snow cap. I recommend the light snow cap. And what I normally do is I start with them around the edge. But once you start getting into the actual white part that I've created there, I'll start using this color instead. And if you feel that it's too blue and it starts to clash, you can always use the luminosity blend mode to give it a more whitish color. If you feel there's too much, too much still dark, you can bring the contrast down to lighten up the light, to lighten up the line work, and then just bring the brightness up. And they will, should blend a little better. But just kind of use the snow cap ones because you're not in a polar region yet, but the mountains are tall enough and close enough that they can have a lot of snow on them. But once you start getting into the snowy covered areas, that's when you'll start putting down mountains that are white or have more snow on them or whichever method you want to do. Don't forget to also bring the scale down on the ones on the end. And then don't forget to stagger a little bit. So what I want to do is select one of these and I'll make sure that it's set to the luminosity blend mode. And I'm going to scale them down and just put a little to the side to kind of create that stagger effect I was talking about. Same thing with the ones up here. I'm going to put a little to the side to stagger. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Same thing up here. Let's go ahead and put these light covered mountains. And I'm not going to make a full range. I'll just make a little range that goes right here. And then we'll go back to this one. Oopsie, we've got to change the blend mode. To luminosity. There we go. Perfect. And we'll create that line. And then we'll stagger, stagger, stagger. Okay. And this is just the method of using plate tectonics. Well, there's some other stuff that we're going to be, because there's going to be, you notice that a lot of the mountain ranges right now are very much vertically oriented because of where the plates are. It doesn't hurt to break up that verticality by adding in some more horizontal or diagonal mountain ranges, and they can be smaller. Right now, these are kind of bigger, but we can start putting in more horizontal ones that are a little bit smaller. And we'll start here at the top. So I made sure the scale is down. And I want to create this horizontal part. So what I'll do is I'll create a straight line. I'll do my staggering thing again. Don't forget to make the ones at the end smaller. That one right there is small enough, I feel. So I'll just scale this down. There we go. And then I'm going to create another one. Just right here, a smaller one. Like that. So creating a ra various range. Because right now, look at all the mountain ranges we have. There, A lot of them are quite long. So making some smaller more horizontal ranges adds in a little bit of variety to the map and it's going to make the mountain ranges clash a little bit I think between horizontal and vertical orientation and I think that looks nice so it's kind of a good thing to kind of do that in my opinion let's actually add a couple more vertical ones right here like this that kind of go up and then kind of split don't forget to stagger let's look for a smaller one to put on that end perfect we're going to go back down here we're going to do the same thing here we're going to create Maybe a little bit of horizontal. It might even kind of line up with this one over here. And then we're going to create one more mountain range right there. Let's bring the scale down. There we go. Let's take a step back and look at it. Yeah, that looks good. And I want to, I'm making sure that when I am putting down my mountain ranges, that there is a lot of negative space for room to put my biome stuff. 
If your mountains are too close together, like this valley right here, guess what's going to happen? You're going to run out of room to put roads, cities, and your biomes. So do make sure that there is some negative space in between your mountains. Right here, see all that negative space? When I say negative space, it just means where there is not mountains. So no confusion there. Wherever there is not mountains, that is negative space. Okay, you always want to make sure that you have some negative space. If you don't have negative space, again, you're not going to have room. All right, I noticed that, you know, this one, this continent right here doesn't have a lot of uh, mountain ranges, and that's fine, but I do want to add in some. So let's go ahead and use this green one right here. I think this looks good. Let me look. Are there other clipping mask ones as well? Yeah, there are those ones. Let's use these right here. These will work just fine. I'm going to scale them up. Remember, these don't have to be big. And what's really cool is combining mountain ranges. So if I take this mountain range right here, oopsie, let's make sure that I have it set to the right scale too. This is set to the right layer, layer one, and this is layer one. Perfect. Okay. So when I am putting them down, you can connect some of the mountains together. And what I feel that does is it acts a little bit more variety, right? Mountains can be varying shapes sizes and colors. And so by throwing in some of these smaller ones in with these taller light karsts, you're adding in some variety. Now let's not also forget to add in some horizontal ones. So if I go in, here's a horizontal one. Let's add in one more horizontal one right there like that. That looks good. We're missing some horizontal ones over here. So let's put one right here. And then let's put another one right here. There we go. Let's take a step back and look at it. Yeah, that looks good. You might want to do some of my staggering that I forgot to do. Don't forget to add the staggering. Okay. Looks good. Some stagger here. Same thing here. Don't want to make them look like... You don't want your mountains to look like a curved line. You want them to look like a natural... Like a natural formation. If you just go with this straight line like this, it looks a little odd. So make sure to kind of break it up. That staggering effect by just putting a couple to the side is a very helpful, very helpful trick in my opinion. All right, let's go ahead and save it at so many changes. Cool, we're getting a lot of these mountains in really, really quick, which I'm glad for. It's nice to see. Uh, and then once we put all the mountains in, then we'll kind of move on to adding the cliffs. We did that in, in part two, and you can see right here on the the right side, right where the saving thing is, that I did put some cliffs in right here. And I even used um, some of the object shadows to blend in these cliffs. Watch what happens when I move it. You see how there's a shadow there? That shadow is there to help blend in that stamp. All right, so just watch episode two uh, if you kind of confuse how exactly I did that, okay? All right, let's take a step back. I want to change up my mountains. I have this nice mountain up here. Um, I think what I'll do is choose a different mountain. And there's different kinds here. You know, there isn't a dark um, mountain option. And, you know, the ones that don't have clipping masks, you can change the hue. So what you can do is change the hue and then just change the brightness down. And what I'll do is I'll get that hue that I want. There we go. That looks about right. Let's change it a little bit more. There we go. Desaturate. Bring the brightness down. There we go. It's suiting about that. Now you could just do luminosity, but I actually don't mind changing up because, you know, I kind of find that this, this is what it looks like with luminosity, luminosity blend mode, and I like it, but I don't want to use it every single time. If all of your mountains use the same blend modes and everything, then the variety there will seem to go away. So it's kind of nice, in my opinion, to play with the hue, the saturation, the brightness a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and scale this down a little bit, and then we'll throw in some ranges in here. There we go. I'm going to go with a range that's more S-curve, like this. Don't forget to stagger. And then I'll put an adjacent one that creates a valley. So if you're not sure with what a valley is, a valley is just between two mountain ranges. So... I always like to have mountain range, some mountain ranges to create that valley. And there's a lot of things you can put in a valley. It could be a desert because it's blocked off from a lot of moisture. It could be in the, a rain shadow. I mean, another great place is for deserts and valleys right here, things like that. So putting in mountain ranges that create these negative spaces and valleys are super important to giving the more biome diversity. Because remember, mountains are so mountain ranges are so big 
they create their own weather and then greatly impact biome development. So it's super important for, in my opinion, that's why you make your mountains first instead of putting your biomes down. Your mountains will play a huge role in the biomes development. So just kind of remember that when you're putting it together. Okay, let's continue uh, adding more mountain ranges. Don't forget also that to put in some volcanoes in some places um, because there is a type of mountain range or type of mountains that are called volcanic and you can throw those in anywhere. The way that I usually put them is, is I'll just put them randomly maybe in somewhere. Like if you want to have a mountain range or a, a volcano in one of your mountain ranges, just make sure that you put them in with your other mountains and they don't have to blend. You know, if that um, mountain range is green and that volcano is gray, that's okay. You'll still be able to blend that in with the other stamp. So kind of decide where you want those volcanoes to be. I think that's an older one. Let's look at the more newer ones. These ones right here. You can always throw these in. And again, they do best within a mountain range. So if I put it down right here and it see that it's kind of blocked by this larger one, There we go. Hey, first time chatter, <laughs> my goat. <laughs> I'm going to put a, a volcano right there, and I'll probably put a couple other volcanoes in as well. Let's go put another volcano right in here. It's a nice little snug little spot right there. There we go. That looks good. All right. Okay, let's keep going. We're throwing in those. Let's keep throwing in the last bit of mountains, and then we'll kind of move on to the cliffs. I don't want to run out of time here. Let's see here. Let's use these grayish ones right here. This looks good. Gray is a neutral color. So whatever color that, yes, absolutely. This VOD will be available to watch later. Also join our YouTube um, channel because we add we upload these to our YouTube channel. Um, what is the name of the map called? I haven't given it a name yet, but if any of you in the chat have a suggestion for what you want to call this map, I am so down. So I am so open to whatever suggestions that or I'm just too lazy to come up with myself, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if you, got, if you all come up with a better idea or come up with a name for it, be my guest. If not, I will totally do it. I don't mind at all. Okay, yeah, well, let's stop jabbering about that and I'll get on to continue adding the last bit of mountains here. Let's make these a little bit smaller. I don't want them to be massive. One thing you got to remember is that there's that height differential. If all the mountains are the same height, then they're probably going to have a lot of the same amount of snow on them. So do remember that if you have some mountains that are super tall and some are really short, you might want to paint the top of them with some paint. Just kind of remember that. All right, let's go ahead and add in just a couple uh, mountain stuff here. What I'll do is I'm just going to create a series of ranges that kind of create this unique shape like this. Don't forget to stagger. And I'm going to have some up here at the top because I'm, I'm sure you already know this already and I say this so much overlap is so important overlap creates depth right you will notice how interesting and how much more depth it looks when you have these mountain ranges these mountains overlapping the top of the landmass like that overlap is so 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 important and we'll be adding a lot of um, islands in here too I generally don't add islands until later because I don't know what biomes there are. And so by putting in all the tiny little item, all the tiny little islands, I'll add them in a little bit later. For now, we'll just stick with the mountain ranges, but I, I love adding in tiny little, little islands. I think that's great. All right, let's go ahead and continue adding that stagger effect that I was talking about. That will give that a more realistic look instead of looks like a straight line. And let's add just like some rando. Let's also do some size differences. Let's make them much, much smaller. And then let's make some on the outskirts of these ranges, but are really, really small. Like this, there we go. Add some small ones here and here. There we go. Let's take a step back and look at it. Cool. All right. Um, so a cool way of rotating a bunch of stamps at once without having to select individual stamps is just select one stamp, hamburger menu, select all stamps like this, and then just rotate a little bit like that, and then select another one, select all from this group, so select all like this, and then go the other way. There you go. So a neat little trick on how to not have to select every individual one that you want to rotate, just select one, select all like this, not everything in the 
in the set, because if you do that, they'll all move to the left or right, though you can do that if you're trying to denote like a weather or something, see what happens if I all place them facing that way or I all have them facing that way. That's not bad, right? I mean, you can totally do that if you want them to be jutted that way. I kind of think that looks cool, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to have them kind of go between the both of them. Or I could just kind of rotate them all going that way, which I kind of do like. I think that looks kind of interesting, right? <laughs> all right. Oh, 107 changes. Let's save it. Where are we at for time? 25. Oh, cool. We're getting so much done in just 25 minutes. I'm I'm happy for that because I really do want to get to uh, the other stuff because I texturing is one of my favorite things to do in Incarnate. I love mixing up textures. And though in the majority of this video, we will we'll be using uh, fantasy world style um, textures it doesn't hurt to mix mash. Kind of a pro tip for those those of you who have the power users, it doesn't hurt to, it doesn't hurt to, um, well, I saw a lot of Wall Street kind of thought there. <laughs> but, um, all right, let's take a step back and look at it here. A lot of changes here. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's jump into, I think we put enough mountain ranges down for now. We can probably... I think there was one more island that I wanted to do. This one right here. Perfect. Yeah, let's do this one. Real quick, I'm just going to add in a couple more. Don't forget to stagger. There we go. Here, same thing right here. Perfect. Okay. And again, make sure there's a lot of freaking room because, oh my goodness. if uh, In the past, I have made a lot of mistakes of not making of making my mountains too big and not having enough space to put down rivers and lakes. Don't make that same mistake. You want to have, again, that negative space so that you can fit your biomes in. It's super important. I can't stress it enough. All right, so let's go throw in some mountain rain, uh, throw in some cliffs. Um, one thing my, I might also do is use object shadows to uh, make some of the stuff pop out more. So like right here, I'm going to select all of these stamps right here. I'm going to go to custom object shadow. I'm going to bring the intensity down, increase the blur, and just kind of move it a little bit to there. Let's bring the height up, and you'll kind of see the difference. They kind of pop out more. One thing I recommend, though, is you don't want the shadow at the base of the mountain, so you're going to have to bring the vertical part up just a little bit. And then I recommend using a color that's associated with the ground texture beneath it. So if the ground texture is green, it only makes sense to use a darker green texture as the shadow, right? Because using black kind of looks weird, but using a darker green gives it a more blending, gives it a more blending, a blendability to it. It looks more like it blends more. So I'll just make sure to kind of do that. It does look a little too dark, so I'll bring the intensity down just a hair, make it a little bit Darker, there we go. And those kind of pop out more. And I do those to mountains that I feel, um, they just don't pop out a whole lot uh, because of the texture that I'm using beneath them. And so that's one reason why you might want to use uh, those shadows. Sometimes you can also just use layer shadows if you want, uh, because these are a shape, part of the shape tool, those won't show up. So just custom object shadow. Always remember, just change up the color to whatever you want them to be if you want them to blend more. Like this has got a bit more of a more yellow-ish kind of tint to it. So we'll kind of add that, bring it over here. Give it a little more yellowish feel. Bring it up. I think it needs to even be more in the yellowish color. There we go. Kind of goes in a more yellowish. There we go. I like that much better. Okay. Kind of a nice trick to make your mountains pop out. In the last, um, in part two, I showed you a whole bunch of tricks with object shadows, using them to blend them in, using them to make them pop out, using object shadows to create the mist of the mountains, do that all the time. So just to kind of recap on that, if you wanted all these mountains to have some kind of uh, like misty or some kind of weathering, you could use custom object shadow, just choose white like this, and then just push it up, and then you have some misty mountains. Boom, done. You didn't have to do any texturing, just boom. Oh, I like that. By the way, Sam, I like that. How does Astragon sound? I like that. No one else is throwing out suggestions, so <laughs> it, it might all just hinge on your on your, <laughs> on your your suggestion, <laughs> which I'm not against at all. Let's go also turn off our plate tectonics, since we're no longer using them. Probably could have turned those off a long time ago. Now I can kind of take a better look at it without those lines on them. 
and I think it turned out nice. I'll do the same thing here. I'm just going to add a white object shadow to this just to give it that mist. It's okay, Demonic Ghost. If you don't have a name, it's okay. I'm not going to put anyone on the spot, okay? You must come up with a name now. There will be consequences. <laughs> no, your guys are fine. It's okay to be shy. It's okay not to know. It's okay if you don't want to participate in the naming. I don't care. <laughs> I might not want your name there. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. oh, I got some great people in the chat there. I love it. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, throw in those mountain ranges or throwing in the cliffs, like I mentioned. So I'm just going to select this cliff, make sure that I have it. Um, if the shadow doesn't pop up, I'm noticing that the shadow didn't pop up. So what I'll have to do is edit it. So I'll go back to custom object shadow. Don't want black. Remember, use brown or a darker color like that don't use there you go that looks about right let's take a look yeah it looks about right perfect okay so let's continue adding in remember in the last episode i mentioned that the best place to put your cliffs is at the base of mountains and it's because while the mountain gets popped up the further away you get from the mountains the more the land flattens out so you don't need to put a lot of cliffs in the middle where your plains are, you need to put them mostly where your mountains are. It doesn't mean that you can't have plateaus and stuff. You can, but a, the place to start with cliffs is at your mountain, the base of your mountains. You simply need to line them up with the line work of the mountains. See how I line that up? Perfect, great. And now what's really cool about that is now you can create these kind of ravines and channels and stuff. You could put a river in between here. See, you can really start, maybe I want to put a plateau rock. So then maybe I want to put that there. So you're starting to get the general idea why mountain, why cliffs work so well at the base of mountains. I've noticed too that the intensity is a little too high up. Let's bring it down. There we go. That's a little bit better. Um, you can also change the blend mode too. If you're wanting to denote that there is more grass covered um, cliffs, which totally happens, luminosity blend mode. Just remember that when you use the luminosity blend mode, don't forget that you will probably have to change the brightness and the contrast. What luminosity does is just pick up the color beneath it, but what it doesn't do is pick up the brightness or darkness. So you have to adjust the, those parts by hand. So if you don't want them to be so popping out, you might want to boost the brightness up a little bit, and that will kind of make them not look so brown. So just kind of remember that trick. You can use luminosity blend mode. Just remember to change the brightness and darkness. That's it. When you're also doing it, don't forget to make some templates. One thing I like to do is create these, what are called plateau rocks. And by making one, I'll use a front facing one and then a back facing one like this. And then what that's going to create is like a little plateau. So we're going to change the luminosity to luminosity. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll make a variety of these copy paste, and then I'll flip one. So I have one going in that direction copy paste let's change the transform change the width we got some tiny ones we're going to copy and paste that one put that down and make a small really tiny one copy and paste flip it make an even smaller one cool now that you have all these you can just group them right away just select them all press the g key you can label them just call them plateau rocks but because we're short on time i'm not going to label them right now just going to group them. I'll label them off screen. Once you've done that, now you can start placing them to line up right along your cliffs here. And what happens, what I think looks really nice is you get these nice little plateau rocks. You can make them a little bit bigger, put one maybe right behind a mountain, put one right here on the side of it, put the small one on top of another one. So if you want to put this one on top of this one, just make sure it's up a layer like this. Oopsie, I see that it didn't connect. My bad. Let's copy and paste that. There we go. Make this bigger. And then place it right on top. Like that. Okay, so there are some ways of making plateau, plateau rocks there. And you don't have to always use cliffs, you can also result resolve to use hills. Um, so when you're doing your hills, 
you know, you might want to have one side of the mountain range have hills and the other side have cliffs. This is going to create some variety with your mountain ranges. So what I'll do just as I'm going to make up my own rule right now is I'm going to put a lot of the hills on the right side of the mountain ranges on this continent. It doesn't mean that all of them have to be. It just means that I'm going to put a lot of them on this side and I'll put a lot of cliffs on the left or west side. You don't have to. It's not an ironclad rule because I, it would look weird if they were only on that side. So when I do add some um, hills to the left side, those are going to pop out a little bit more and be more interesting. Let's go ahead and add some hills here as well. And don't be afraid to just tuck them right into the base of the, of the mountain. Don't, be, don't have to be way off to the side over here. Just nice and neatly tuck them right in there. And that will give it a nice transition between elevation changes from tall mountains to medium-sized hills to very small hills to plains areas. So just kind of remember that trick. As you get further and further away from the big hills, make smaller hills. It's just kind of a nice little trick to do that. Just remember, have big, have medium, have small. I've said this in many maps that I've made, including battle maps. What creates this natural variety look is variation in size. So having some mountains being huge, some being small, some being medium, having some hill, having some hills being big and being small is really going to create an interesting sense of diversity and a sense of realism in your map. So now that I've kind of put down the bigger size hills, I can put down those smaller ones where I see fit and just have them be furthest away from the mountain. That's all. Just remember those tricks. And when you're putting the hills together, make a cluster of three, make a cluster of two, then throw in some single randos there. So like put a cluster of three here and then one off to the side, put a cluster of two and then one off to the side, a cluster of three over here, one to the side. So you kind of get, you're kind of getting the formula that I'm doing. A cluster of three, one rando, two two cluster, rando one. So kind of following these kind of methods makes it easier to create that realism. And you'll notice that it will take a lot of changes as you're adding in your mountains. All right. So see, it's following the method, following a method. It doesn't matter if it's my method or if it's Philip's method or if it's uh, whoever your favorite cartographer is. I don't have to be your favorite cartographer. I'm not the best. I'm just one of them. And there's a lot of great cartographers out there. It's just figure out what their method is. Pick their brain. Pick my brain. Pick their brain. Doesn't matter. Pick their brain. Try to figure out exactly, you know, how is it they do those things? Because if you really want to create a certain style of map, you need to find out who's creating them. And then how can I make them like that too? So just kind of remember that. Let's go ahead and continue adding clips. I don't want to stop. Yes, the Discord is great for picking the brain 100%. And we have an incredible Discord community. I mean, some really great people there, some really great mentors. I really recommend that you join. Um, you're going to get a lot of help there. So definitely go check that out. Okay, let's continue kind of adding uh, more of the clips here. And there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take one of these, copy, paste. And I'm going to turn the luminosity blend mode off. Set it back to norm. Oopsie, I think I did some other adjustments as well. Let's make sure to fix those real quick. There we go. Perfect. Go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. A nice little island right there. Perfect. And then just like you make the cliffs, just like you make the hills smaller, don't be afraid to remember. Don't, don't forget to make some of the cliffs smaller. The farther you go away, the elevation changes get smaller. Uh, lower, right? So as you get further away, start making your cliffs a little bit smaller. And that will help to kind of show that differential when you're kind of doing that. So if I take like one of these right here, copy and paste, make it much smaller, and then put it farther away. Because the further it goes, and let's go ahead and flip the whole thing. You can flip a whole group. Oopsie, my bad. I forgot about that. So just flip the whole group. There you go. So the further you go away, smaller things get. The smaller the cliffs get, the smaller the, the hills get. So kind of remember that. Let's take a step back and see where we're at. I'm at 39. we got 20 minutes left. So far, the mountains part is going well. Um, again, not every single mountain range needs to have cliffs or hills. 
It can just be barren mountains. It doesn't have to have hills. Okay, just kind of remember that. Now, I've mentioned this in the last in some other streams too, is that all of these mountains look the same height. So I'm just going to select a couple randos in here, and then I'm going to go over to transform and bring the height up. And that way I kind of have some varying height in my mountain ranges. Now those ones that are really tall, you might want to paint some snow on top because they are super tall. Now, if none of the mountains in this area are tall enough to have snow, that's fine. But just kind of remember to pick just a couple randos and then have them pop out. And I'm also going to do the same thing that I mentioned earlier. I'm going to take some smaller ones and I'm going to do that staggering effect with smaller ones. Again, that's going to create that sense of diversity. So we staggered with the big ones. Now let's stagger with some small ones. There we go. And what doesn't hurt is to even create some adjacent small ranges that are perpendicular or par not perpendicular, parallel to them. So if you want, throw some smaller ranges like this that just kind of really small ones that just kind of follow the main range. Let's go up here. Same thing. We got some mountains right here. Let's create a little smaller range. Just a little small little range right there. A little small one right there. There we go. Ooh, let's put another one right here. That'll look nice. There you go. And you'll see that that just really just kind of adds a little more diversity to it. Remember just not to add too much. You do want to have room to put stuff. Notice that I have still have plenty, plenty, plenty of room for that. So just kind of remember that. All right. Cool. I really like the way this is going. Um, let's go ahead and take a break from mountains. I'm going to save. We're going to take a break from mountains and let's start covering some base texturing. So this is kind of transitions into biomes a little bit. It's just that I don't want to run out of time. I don't want to just do mountains the whole stream. I do want to um, throw in some really cool texturing techniques that I think you guys are really going to like. So the first thing that I'll do um, is that I know that I already, now that I have all my mountains down, I really don't need to have that texture guide that I'm using for biomes anymore. And so what I would do, oh, we'll, we'll cover forests. We're not going to do a forest on this map, but we will in the next stream. We're going to cover biomes. We're going to stick with just one, one or two biomes per stream. So I'll probably do forest in the next one. Um, but the first thing that you'll want to do is I, I think of layering. Okay. Oh, yeah. What's the name, Cheryl? Please, or Becca, let me know. Um, the first thing to do is when you're doing texturing, the trick is layering. All right. So the first thing that I'll do is the first layer that I normally have is dirt, right? So once you've put dirt on top, not everything has dirt. There's grass. There might be uh, wasteland. There might be snow. And so what I'll end up doing is start building up these layers of texturing. So the first layer is dirt. Okay. Once you've added in dirt, then you're going to choose the next texture that you want. And I usually do grass. Really cool. <laughs> Matt Mapia. <laughs> Matty Mapia. Great. Um, is to, now you want to choose your biome textures. For now, we're just going to stick with green. And what I'll do is I am going to use the edgy brush. This is called, this shape is called the edge brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to Turn the roughness all the way to three, all the way down to three, and I'm going to turn off smooth. Now, when you are brushing, when you are doing texturing with the edgy brush, you have to bring the opacity down quite a bit. And let me tell you why. Once I apply this, you see how much that doesn't blend in very well? It doesn't look very good, does it? But when I start bringing the opacity down a little bit, then I can start creating multiple strokes. So just think of as if you were a painter, right? If you're a painter, you're never going to create one stroke and everything's going to look good. You got to go through multiple strokes. And so what I'll end up doing is, is I'll play this little game of operation with myself. I won't actually touch the border, the edge of it like this, and I'll just fill in an area with a little bit of grass. Just start with the first stroke. Don't let go of the pen. Hold it down. Don't think of operation. Eh, don't touch the edge. Now add in the second layer. Paint on top of that. And the trick is don't touch the edge of the first layer that you put down. Ah, let's do it again. Let's do this another layer. But don't touch the edge of the layer you just created. And what you're doing is you're creating a transition. You're creating a transition 
between the layers. And what you're doing is creating this nice little bit of texturing. And what's nice about the edgy brush is it creates these little artifacts, these little polygon cells, which do some of the, that do some of the texturing and uh, some of the blending for you. Now remember, these are not the textures we're gonna stick with for all of them. I'm just showing you the technique. Start with that first stroke, go in, don't touch the brown. Don't touch that brown edge, just like operation. Don't touch it. There we go, done. Then you can go in with single clicks and just stick into the center. And some areas can be greener than others, but maybe you want this area to be really green. This side's a little bit more brown. Let's put a little bit more green over here, a little bit more over here, put a little more over here. So you're kind of getting the idea on how to blend using the edgy brush, a lower opacity. Remember to play with the edge settings and you already have some really nice blending going on by kind of using this technique, okay? I You don't have to use the edgy brush if you don't want to, but I'm bringing it up because I don't see a lot of people use this technique, and I do want to advertise it a little bit because it is a nice technique. It does work really well. I think it adds to it, so it works out well. Let's try doing it again, but let's just use a different, let's use a different color, like up here, right? And what I'll do is I'm just going to take that greenish color, and I'm just going to put it underneath where the mountains are and nowhere else so that they'll blend in those mountains. There we go. Nice, nice. And it is going to take a lot of strokes now because you are at a lower opacity. So just kind of remember that. There you go. Perfect. And I'm going to kind of connect it in, put a little bit more brown in here. Remember not to touch those edges. There we go. Okay. Now, once you've done that, you can also put in, don't forget to add in some of your shoreline. You see, since we didn't use the add mode of the mask tool, guess what? We can't use we can't use the mask effects. And that's not a bad thing, because one thing I've noticed about mask effects is they're universal. They affect every landmass. But what if you don't want a sandy beach on every single part of your landmass? You'll have to paint it in. And so what I'll do is just single click, start clicking in some areas where I want to have a beachhead. So I have a beach there. Let's put another beach head right here. I like that. Let's put another beach head right here. And the trick here is that you want to have the brightest amount of that texture on the very edge. So we're doing the opposite. Before you were putting, you were not touching the edge and then having it fade. So it fades out towards the edge. This is the opposite. You start at the very edge and move your way in and it fades in fades as it goes inward. So just kind of remember that trick. So you kind of start to see, and you can see, I mean, it starts to come together when you start using that edgy brush. You can start creating some nice little things over here. Same thing over here. I want to maybe put a little snow, a little bit of, um, bit of a beach here. And I'll make sure to, again, to put those nice edges in there. There we go. Cool. So some nice, Nice tricks. Oh, yeah. Cynthia has got some great maps. I I love her work. Okay. So you're kind of adding in some of that. So see, blending is not as complex as you think. I think some people, and I'm, I don't want to uh, monolith, not every map maker is the same, but I do see that some people kind of struggle with blending. And blending is not as complex as you think. You know, blending is about just having a method with that fading technique going in and out of the edges, things like that. Using those methods makes blending easier. Using the edgy brush at a lower opacity, all very, very helpful stuff. So don't be afraid to just experiment, play on your maps. The more and more that you get, the more and more you play with, with um, um, blending with textures, the better you're gonna get. Okay, let's go ahead and throw in some other colors. Um, like maybe I wanna create like a wasteland and I want to have that. So, and for my wasteland texture, I'm, I'm not going to actually put any stamps down. I'm just texturing. Just remember that. What I'll end up doing is, is that I want to place my wasteland away from water. What makes a wasteland a wasteland, right? It's a waste. It doesn't have a lot of vegetation. It's not a very safe place to live because there's probably not going to be a lot of food since vegetation can't grow. So guess what the missing ingredient to a, a wasteland is? Water right? So you wouldn't want to put a wasteland right here along the ocean unless it was 
maybe a wasteland that um, maybe there's maybe the ocean water is so cold there um, that you can't get the warmer temperatures to create rain. But for me, because water is the major element that's lacking for a wasteland, then you're probably going to want to put it more closer to the center of the map. And so I might want to decide where I want to put that. Like right here is a good place to have it, I think. And so what I'll do is just start putting down a little bit of orange for my wasteland. I'll even put some on the side here. Remember, I want it away from the ocean. There we go. So I got a little bit of that. And you know, again, see how those cells right there? It just did half the blending work for you. It's just, that is the beauty of using the edgy brush. It really, really, really helps with that. So we'll just kind of continue following the same techniques that we've been doing. We Let's go use different greens because not all grass is the same. You know, I use this type of green right here. I use this light green. Let's use this more swampy type of green color right here. And let's go ahead and put this in here. And remember that trick, just put down that first layer, don't let go. And then just start single click into the center. Kind of cool, huh? I, I just, I love using the edgy brush. I used it in my one of the last world maps I made and I just found it to be so incredibly helpful. So definitely use those, okay? Let's go in here. There's some other oranges in here as well. Look at this one right here, this grass right here. This color looks great. Um, it's within a yellow color, which is within orangish color. And so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and place that color along here to make sure those blend in. Remember to not to touch those edges. Yeah, I love that edgy brush, huh? You see how cool texturing is? You just got to put it in there, put in some of those colors. There we go. Nice. And it's already seeming to come together. All right. We don't want, again, we want to really change it up. We don't want to use the same grass. Let's use this grass mixed hue. This is kind of a nice grass color. Let's go ahead and throw that in over here. Single click. That will give it a little more marshy kind of feel to it. We'll carry it on down to here. Remember to use that technique. The closer you get to the inside of, of it, the more you're going to apply. The further you are, the closer you get to the edges, eh, don't touch. So just remember that rule. Okay, let's keep using the edgy brush. Let's see here. There's some nice browns in here. What's this one? Grass too. Oh, I like this. This is a nice color to it. Let's throw that in there too. Great. Okay. Awesome. And one thing to recommend is if you have negative space, that's a great place to start texturing. Notice that I'm not texturing where the mountains are. Like I'm not texturing in where the mountain is. I'm texturing in the negative space where there's not mountain. Okay. What that does is it helps the mountain to blend in better. I don't have to use a different texture here to blend it in because I'm just using another texture in the negative space. Okay. All right. Let's take a step back. We still have a couple more things already. It's coming together. Loving it. Looking so good. Yeah, it's time to save. <laughs> 1K. Hmm. That's a... <clears throat> you've just lost... You've just lost connection. <laughs> it's edgy. It likes to be negative. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no positive brushing here. <laughs> now, the one thing that I do recommend is you don't have to follow that logic of the brushing everywhere. Notice how I have these white mountains here. It kind of makes sense to use a snow texture to make sure that they blend in. So on this one, I am going to put down this white texture only where the, basically only where the mountains are and just start with the first one. Then you can start single clicking and then really start to get those mountains to kind of blend in. And that's why you want a dark dirt uh, texture as your base texture because when you're painting on top of it you already have some variation in it now you don't have to go and take a brown texture and put that on top of that and then break it up into a more wet white texture on top of that no starting with a base texture means you're already blending when you've applied the second or third or fourth texture that's why it's important to definitely have a base texture to work with and what I want to do is I am going to have the entire, this entire ground, this entire continent, because it's in the snow region, I'll probably end up putting, just for good measure, an entire layer of white just right on top, like that. Just a nice, healthy layer. And I will put maybe even another one a little further up right here. There we go. And in fact, we're just going to keep going. Let's just add in a couple more. 
just to give it that nice feel to it. There we go. Now, when you are transitioning, um, single click little dots are a great way to go. Check this out. So when I do single dots, what this does is it's creating a sense of blending. It's blending. And what you do is you do them twice. You do one with the white texture and then use that whatever texture you're using and then use it again to go inward into here. And then this will kind of help to create this kind of blending between your base textures. Because again, these are still base, base textures. I'm going to add in a couple more. Will you add in some rivers? Yes. I'm going to be throwing in rivers. We'll probably do that next stream um, because we are short on time. It's already 55 after. I'm probably just going to add in a couple. I'm just going to real quick add in the last remaining uh, textures that I want to blend in. And then I'll probably paint a couple shorelines. And then next stream is when we'll throw in rivers and lakes because rivers and lakes also have a huge impact on biome development, not just mountains. It's not like mountains are the only thing that affect biome development. Lakes and rivers also affect biome development. So it's kind of a good idea after you've built your mountain ranges and you've done your texturing and your blending for your base texturing to throw in your rivers and lakes next because again, they will play a huge role in biome development. I can't tell you how important bodies of water or just water in general is a huge biome, huge factor in biome development. Okay, so we're gonna quickly save. I'm gonna spend the next five minutes quickly adding in the last bit of base texture that I need to add in and then we'll paint in just a couple more shorelines. I'll, I don't wanna do anything off screen in a time lapse because I don't really, um, I don't want to like deprive you of anything. So what we'll do is instead of doing time lapses and stuff like that, I'll probably just continue working where we left off. Just kind of a heads up. All right. So let's keep going. Um, we're going to blend in. I'm going to bring that brush size up like we did before. Really bring it in. There we go. Single click it and, and you can really get those textures in here. And then, oh, oh and I, one thing I also wanted to do was to make Excuse me, I wanted to make small islands, which we should probably be doing in, in, in an episode as well. Don't forget those single clicks. You see what those single clicks do? They really break it up, the transition. Think of it as diffusing, right? If you have a straight line, it looks weird. But when you add little dots to it, you're diffusing the line, giving it a sense of that it's breaking up. It's called breaking the line or diffusion. And so it's important to add that in there when you're blending in your biome textures. Just remember, single little clicks in that texture. And I'm gonna use it again, this little green, this little brown texture, and I'm gonna go into the white area and break it up. And as you can see, it creates that nice blending effect, which I love. And you can even use it to create like maybe some you know, some like little hills or something or whatever you want. You can be creative with it. Do whatever you want. Just happy little clicks. Bob Ross telling you the happy little clicks. <laughs> okay, let's take a step back here. Yeah, I think we're almost there. Let's go ahead and add in a last bit of um, sand for our beach stuff. So I want to put a nice one in right here. And I'm going to bring up the opacity on this one because I don't want to do thousand strokes and so just remember single click along these edges to create this nice shoreline you got here there we go put another one in right there I think that looks good just just your, get your happy little clicks in all right just be a little clicky there okay and just remember it the texture is going to be most prevalent on the very edge where the shoreline is it can dissipate as it goes further away from it. So just remember that trick. You want to have it be nice and thick on the edge and then little clicks like that to really get the blend in the shoreline with the base texture that you're using. Okay, I think I like right here as well. It's a little shoreline right here. And I guess next episode, we're going to be doing both islands, biomes, lakes, we might not be able to get to all of that. Likely we'll get to rivers, lakes, and probably little islands. Because just like you're trying to diffuse the continent line, and I will mention this real quick, just like you're trying to diffuse the continent line, the, the, the texturing, you also want to diffuse the continent, the line. You see how the, the continents without little islands on them, it looks a little, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it, there's no 
transition between the water and the land. And so what's really, really helpful is to take an edgy brush and you can just single click some little islands along the edge like this. And what that does is it's going to break up the island edge. And I don't want to go too deep in it, but I just wanted to show you what you're kind of what we might be experiencing because putting in these little these little islands right here does the same it's the same concept when I'm blending my biomes, right? It's breaking up those solid lines of the land masses against the solid line that is the ocean. So breaking up, remember creating some breaking up some little tiny islands along the edge and using the edgy brush to do it is a good idea, okay? So you can kind of, what you're doing, again, creating that transition between the ocean and don't forget to make some of the islands bigger because what you'll notice is that the cells are the same size. And so it's kind of silly when all the islands are the same size. So when you are putting them down, make sure to have one that has three cells, one that has one cell, one that has two cells when you're putting together other, because islands are not going to be um, all the same size. So just kind of remember that, all right? You see how that already broke it up and already made it look more interesting by doing that trick. So just kind of remember that. All right. Well, that is it. So next episode, which will be next month, what we will be doing is we'll create the lakes. We're going to create the rivers and we're going to create some more small islands. Okay. So super excited about that. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed chatting and laughing with you all. You guys are great. Um, let's continue on this series. Um, I do want to mention that we are going to throw in some fae, some fae and some evil. I want to throw in some fantasy elements. Right now, everything just kind of looks more like realistic biomes. I really want to throw in some fantasy biomes as well, like mushroom and all that stuff. We'll get to that later. All right. Thank you so much. Please stay safe and healthy and merry mountain making. I'll see you all, everyone.